not going to work. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Sacramento Public Library Authority Board. Today's date is Monday, July, June, June 12, 2023. That's wishful thinking, I think. And uh, this meeting is called to order. And I, at this time, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll and establish quorum and read the public statement. Sean Lalowey. Karina Talamantes. Katie Valenzuela. Here. Katie Maple. Here. Mai Vang. Here. Bill Serna. Here. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Here. Pat Hume. Lopez Taft. Mary Jane Lopez Taft. Here. Rod Brewer. Here. Kevin Spees. Oh, yeah, yeah. Present. John Farmer. Yeah. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Saul Hernandez. Here. Lisa Kaplan. <clears throat> Noel Mora. Bina Lefkowitz. Jennifer Larrett. Portia Middleton. Sergio Robles. Linda Budge. And we have a quorum with 10 members present. And I see Director Lalowe is here as well. And so at this time, I wonder if Director Maple, if you would mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Absolutely. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our next item is item number two, public Here comment. Lost. I need to read the statement. Oh, I'm sorry. I got ahead of us. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the, lo the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, June 17th at 4 p.m. on Channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available upon request no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should complete a speaker identification form located in the back table and give it to the clerk. Members, addressed, members attending via Zoom should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Thank you. And at this time, item number two, public comment on matters not on the agenda. Um, we have Mark Graham, and he's on Zoom. Okay. Ask him to unmute himself. Hey, Mark, did you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. Okay, good afternoon, Madam Chair Frost, Madam Vice Chair Telemontes, board members and staff. My name is Mark Graham and I live in Elk Grove. I ask you to place the email which I sent to you on Friday, June 9th and the comments I'm about to make today into the record. Also, I sent you an email minutes ago which has screenshots from a page from the US Department of Labor from OSHA and please place all those screenshots and that email into the record of today's meetings. I also ask for the board response to my comments. You can respond to my comments under agenda item eight, reports, ideas, and questions from board members. You can also respond under agenda item two, the item we are currently on. The Ralph Brown Act, section 54954.2, 
lowercase a, three, specifically authorizes the board to respond to questions and comments on items not on the agenda in seven different ways. You can briefly respond to my comments or direct your staff to respond. You do not have to, but you can. You have the power to respond. Ask your board attorney to fully explain all seven of them. Section 54954.2, lowercase a, three of the Brown Act. Any belief that you hold to the contrary is a misunderstanding and should be corrected as soon as possible. Board members, as I wrote to you last Friday and on March 18th, it is freezing cold in the branches of the Sacramento Public Library in the winter. It is uncomfortably cold and unnecessarily cold. I brought this to the attention of your library director, Peter Coyle, back in February and your library facilities director, David Hillier, in March. Neither one of them denied the problem. Neither one of them denied that it is uncomfortably cold in the library in the winter, but they both told me two false and conflicting statements. In my email from June 9 last Friday, I copied and showed you their statements. They both told me it is the responsibility of each city where there is a library branch to operate the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. This is called HVAC, H-V-A-C. The H in HVAC stands for heat. Unfortunately, this is a false statement. As the Elk Grove City Clerk Jason Lindgren confirmed for me last Friday, it is not the city's responsibility. It is the library's responsibility to operate the HVAC system. Mr. Coyle and Mr. Hillier also deferred to the federal government, specifically the, the OSHA page on safe work, which I uh, sent to you uh, today and on June 9th and on March 18th. Uh, they claim that, that it auth requires the library to maximize the amount of outside air in the library. Why? To fight COVID. You have about this is 10, a misinterpretation. You have about this is 20 seconds guidance. remaining. Thank you. Um, it, OSHA never said that you had to. It's voluntary and it's a recommendation only. They also never said that you could not heat the outside air as you bring it into the library. So this is a ma major mis misunderstanding. Um, I'm asking for a board response. Please take a close look. It's paragraph seven of the o OSHA webpage. It's called uh, maintain adequate ventilation. Thank you, supervisors and board members. Thank you, Mark. I'm sorry that you're having this problem. I'm going to ask our council to comment. I'm, my understanding is that we can't uh, carry on a conversation, but we could respond appropriately to his letter at a later time or staff can respond. That's correct. W would you like to respond in any way, uh, Mr. Coyle? Certainly, Chair Frost. Uh, we have been in conversation with, Sir, with Mr. Graham. He has shared this information with us on multiple times. We have had conversations with the city staff of the respective buildings. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure he is having discomfort with the temperature in the building. Um, and we have done everything we can to make sure that the building is safe for all users. I'm sorry he is uncomfortable, um, but we are not violating any law or statute or safety code violation. Um, it's a matter, I think, at this point of maybe personal preference of temperature. Um, you know, we are doing our best to make sure that the buildings are comfortable for all our users, um, but we are, I believe, comporting to the requirements of our HVAC system. And you'll be responding to his letter? Uh, yes, we will respond Finally. again to Mr. Graham. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, Mr. Graham, uh, the, the library authority will be uh, issuing a formal response to you as well. Do we have any other public comments? Okay. Our next item is item number 3.1, Friends of the Sacramento Public Library. <laughs> Hello, members of the board. My name is Devon Graves. I currently serve as the vice president for the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library. Uh, joined by uh, some colleagues here as well. Give a shout out to Anita Scurry, who you all know very well, and Martin Rosenberg, who here as well. Um, I want to start off and letting you know that the board did not meet since the last time you all met, but we do have some updates that we wanted to make sure, sure to share with you. So the first thing is, i um, excited to share that um, last week was California Nonprofits Day and your favorite Friends of the Sacramento Public Library was selected as a 2023 Nonprofit of the Year 
and honored by Senator Angelique Ashby for Senate District 8. Uh, we were very honored to have that recognition. Our president, Fred Dobb, and I participated last week in the event in front of the Capitol, where we were alongside other honorees um, for nonprofit organizations across the state. Uh, we just want to thank uh, Senator Ashby for her this recognition and her staff for an amazing team for making this happen. And uh, most importantly, we want to thank our uh, friends of the Sacramento Public Library leadership, our staff and volunteers whose commitment made this all uh, possible. So thank you for that. As a reminder, on June 25th, the fiscal uh, board will be having our all friends meeting. So uh, you all are invited to come and participate in the fund that is engaging with our volunteers and local affiliate leadership. And then one last thing I wanted to uh, uh, share with you on behalf of the board is in regards to um, the consent items, um, um, specifically item 6.2 for the contract with branding. I want to make sure that uh, the, the JPA knows that the uh, Friends of the Sacramento Public Library um, are willing and, and able to serve in any capacity on supporting the um, work on improving the branding for the library, and we hope to serve a formal role in making sure that the outward facing branding um, is in the best ability to for the community. And so the friends hopes to participate in any of those ongoing conversations over the next two years with this contract. So uh, that is it for me. If any of my other friends, colleagues have anything to share, um, uh, Anita, please feel free if that is okay with the board. Thank you. That's definitely okay. Thank you. Um, as co-team captain of our big day of giving, I would like to say thank you. I see Lisa Martinez is on this at this meeting, and I'd like to say thank you to her and her communications team for the help that they gave us that allowed us to um, raise a record hundred plus thousand dollars for summer reading and the big um, and book first. So thank you. Congratulations. That's that's awesome. And I I want to also. Um, offer congratulations for the uh, 2023 nonprofit of the year and special thank you to Senator Ashby for that recognition. And thank you for that report, Devin. Our next item is three point or was that uh, was that the end of your report? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Devin. Next item is 3.2 lunch at the library. Is this thing on? It is. Okay. Um, are the slides going to be shown on the screen? Perfect. Uh, my name is Christy Hamm. I am the Youth Services Manager for Sacramento Public Library. And I have with me a guest as well. <laughs> my name is Katie Ball. I'm the, I'm the Special Projects Associate in the CES Department. And we're here today to talk to you about our Lunch at the Library program for this summer. So lunch at the library starts tomorrow. This is something the library has done for several years. We provide free meals for kids 18 and under, uh, running Tuesdays through Fridays from 12 to 1. This year we're in 13 different library locations, thanks to two different uh, food partners, the Natomas Unified School District and the Elk Grove Unified School District, who are able to provide free meals at no cost to the library in all of these locations. Um, this is something that our community depends on during the time when school is out. Up to 80% of kids who are normally receive their free meals at school don't have access to those meals during the summer. And so the library really partners with these partners to make sure that we are making uh, free nutritious food available for our community. And as you can see from these comments, the families really do appreciate that. This year, we, this is our 10th year of lunch at the library. Since 2013, when we started in one location, we have served over 100,000 free meals for kids. Uh, this year, we're really ex excited to blow this program out of the water thanks to an amazing grant from the California State Library. We received uh, almost $200,000, and we're going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do with that. Uh, this is to support core programs, and some of this money includes money for staffing. Having an extra service point at a time when the library is uh, busier than ever is really vital, and so money from the State Library will help with that. There's a youth development component that will provide paid teen uh, work experience in all of our locations. <clears throat> In addition, there's a farm to summer component, which helps connect um, youth with fresh produce and kind of knowing more about where food comes from. And then a special innovation project that Katie's going to talk about as well. Uh, youth development has been a key part of Lunch at the Library since its inception. Uh, having teens 
coordinate and, and run this program in, um, under supervision of staff has really been important. During the course of our time of lunch at the library, many of these teen program coordinators have gone to be full-time uh, staff members with the library. So we know this is a great way to introduce young people to work experience, connection with each other, and then in turn introduce them to the library and what services we provide. Uh, this summer, for example, our youth development part is a paid program coordinator opportunity for teens. We know this is something our community needs very much. We had over 650 youth applied and 50 of them were chosen. Each of them will earn $500 stipend for a scholarship time for their time. 32 hours they'll work at the library and part of that time includes some weekly sessions together uh, to focus on kind of social emotional learning and connection with each other, which we know is important now more than ever. And we hear from them that this is really valuable, helps feel them feel connected, have meaningful opportunities, connect to the community and with each other. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Katie. Thank you. All right, so we um, also got funding from the California State Library under the umbrella of the library, Lunch at the Library Corps program. So we received $25,000 to connect more children's teens and children to food during the summer. And just some background about this is um, that food justice has been a big focus in the public libra library sphere. Um, so earlier this year, the Urban Libraries Council published a white paper um, called Food is a Right, Libraries and Food Justice, which talks about the statistics of food insecurity nationwide, as well as um, what public libraries are doing to address their local needs. Um, so this is a need in our community. Um, Nearly 12% of Sacramento County residents experience food insecurity, and many of the food deserts that we see in Sacramento County are at sites where we hold lunch at the library. So to address this need, we partnered with two organizations. We partnered with the Health Education Council as well as the Sacramento Food Bank. And our activities for the innovation grant are gonna be threefold. So first we're going to um, give out food boxes to families. So you can see an example of one here. So it's going to have shelf stable items as well as fresh produce that we'll be able to give out. And we're going to be doing distribution at all 13 of the branches participating in Lunch at the Library. And then Health Education Council is actually going to be offering nutrition education and cooking demonstrations using our brand new shiny mobile kitchen that we just got. Um, so we're really excited <laughs> to bring that out in the community and put it to use this summer. And they'll be uh, doing it alongside the food distribution. So people will be able to get food and then learn how to cook it and make different recipes and learn about healthy foods. And then also, uh, we're giving out copies of Good and Cheap Eat Well on $4 a day in both English and Spanish inside of the food boxes. Um, so again, just another resource for families to take home uh, to learn how to cook food um, and how to make their food stretch. And then just to add on to this, even though this isn't Part of the innovation grant, we did, um, the CES department worked and coordinated a series of virtual cook at home programs with Leanne Brown, who is the cookbook author of Good and Cheap. Um, she's all about embodied cooking and um, injecting mindfulness into her cooking philosophy. Um, so we're going to be putting flyers about her program in the food boxes as well, so people can participate in that too. And thank you so much. Christy and Katie, uh, I want to thank you. I'm, I'm always excited about the lunch program um, in the schools, and it's really uh, heartening to hear that we have that in the library also. And I love that they're doing nutrition classes because uh, a lot of people don't realize there's things you can do that are a lot cheaper. You can go buy beans and rice, and um, there's things you can do that stretch further um, if you're not going out and eating fast food or, or whatever. There's ways to make your money stretch. So I think that's really neat that you're, you're having those nutrition classes. And we do have some uh, directors who uh, are uh, in the queue to speak, Supervisor Serna. 
Thank you. So I appreciate the uh, um, briefing on what seems to be a really successful uh, and needed program. Um, I, uh, I wonder though, something that, that wasn't mentioned, um, do we have families or, or um, young people that are taking advantage of the program who for no other reason have an affiliation with the library system and so while they're there, they're getting signed up with a library card and otherwise perhaps leaving not only with a full stomach but maybe with a handful of books? I can speak to that. That's actually one of the reasons why we think the program has been so successful. Um, Sacramento Public Library has been offering this as a way to kind of connect folks who need meals with people at the, you know, at the library, and then also people at the library who may also need meals, and it's been, been a great synergy. So yes, part of the, the services that are offered and part of the development opportunity for the teen volunteers is to help connect people, sign them up for summer reading, we're doing book giveaways, getting them excited about what we have to offer. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Director Maple. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to say I, I'm so thrilled about this. Congratulations on, on these, these amazing programs. We know that food insecurity is a huge issue in Sacramento, and I know my colleague, Councilmember Vang and, and Mayor Steinberg are, have launched the Food Justice Task Force and um, are, are just doing this work in Sacramento, but um, this is just another piece of the pie, right? As we, the pie, I, I didn't even mean to make a joke about that, but um, <laughs> of how are we going to help our community members, how are we going to help our young people um, who are having issues getting connected to getting the food that they need, but also learning about how they can do it for themselves. That's so important, right? Hopefully that's something that they can take on um, and carry with them for the rest of their lives. So just appreciate all the work that you've done. Thank you, Director Maple. Director Vang. Thank you, Chair. I just, uh, Christy and Katie, just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you so much just for all the great work that y'all are doing in the community. I think um, as we approach summer, we know that oftentimes schools are the only location where our babies can get access to a warm meal. Um, and school is out. If you're not in summer school, many of our families are really struggling to get food on the table. And so um, our libraries are such important hubs um, and really appreciate just a shout out for District 8 in particular because both of our public libraries are actually um, location points, Martin Luther King and Valley High North Laguna. And so really great to see that. Um, but definitely want to have a follow-up meeting just because we do have a food justice task force in the city of Sacramento. I wanted to make sure that we're in coordination with our efforts because I think there's a lot of synergy there. Uh, but really just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for all the work that you do for our families and our babies in the region and just really excited for the summer for, for all of our kids. So thank you so much. Thank you, Director Vang. Do we have anyone online that would uh, like to make any comments? Seeing none. Thank you very much. You. And our next item is 3.3 Pride Month events. And we have Todd Deck on deck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the presentation going to load? Oh, it should. Okay. <laughs> How do I move it back and forth? Is it? It's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this one, Christy? Oh, how do I move it back? Oh, okay. Well, we'll just go with it. Sorry. Uh, my name is Todd Deck, and I am the community engagement manager for the Sacramento Public Library. And I was asked to give an update on uh, some pride activities that Sacramento Public Library has been working on. Uh, before I go into that, I did want to take a moment and just amplify the first Sacramento, or the first Sacramento Pride, which was held in 1979, and was a result of a police raid at a disco on K and 12th Street. And the first Pride had around 500 attendees, and I just wanted to celebrate and thank those first 500 people. Um, so this is an image of our Pride booth, which we were here, uh, we had this past Saturday and Sunday, and it was a lot of fun. This gives you an idea of the Pride booth in action, and we distributed some rainbow pencils, which are actually uh, here for you today, and they're actually made from recycled newspaper. So it was a lot of, I love the library, thank you, and thank you for having sustainable swag. And I just felt very lucky because I have a job where people get to tell me repeatedly all day uh, that I love the work that you do. And that was a really just wonderful thing to experience. And 
Uh, speaking of sustainability, we actually had some garland, if you see in the photo to the right, uh, that was made from a staff member that used actual uh, old flyers of the library, and she decorated them. So we are taking that sustainability approach to all of the work that we do. And a friend of mine actually emailed me uh, on Saturday and said, those pencils are so cool, my favorite swag from today. So I thought that was a pretty good piece of feedback. And one of the joys of being new to this position is getting to talk to new staff members. And a staff member told me that they, their family has been participating in the SPL Pride March since 2016. And in 2016, there were eight people marching with SPL, and four of them were her family members. And yesterday, we had over 40 people participate in it, uh, which is really just a wonderful thing to see. So this was yesterday morning. Um, this is the March in Action, and I thought I heard a lot of I Love the Library at the Pride booth on Saturday. That was yesterday, it was thousands of people yelling, we love the library, and it was wonderful to hear and be part of that day. Um, the other thing we did that I'm really grateful for is we did center the Pride March around the joy of LGBTQIA reading. If you see the signs there, you'll see some very popular books that people are that are LGBTQIA, and we really wanted to amplify the freedom to read and how important it is for people to see themselves in the books that we offer. And we also got to hear a lot of, we love, I love that book. So that was really just a wonderful way to bring the library and be supportive to the LGBTQIA community in Sacramento. And before I leave, I did want to just let you all know about an event next week at the Main Library Galleria, which is Ann Bannon, a 91-year-old uh, pulp fiction, uh, queen of lesbian pulp fiction. She wrote a series of very popular novels in the late 1950s and 1960s that were the first of its kind. This is an edition from the 1980s. If you get an original edition, it costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars online. And it's going to be a great opportunity to discuss the joy of reading LGBTQIA books, but also a chance to appreciate a local icon in their 90s for the, from the LGBTQIA community. And I think that is all that I have for you. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you, Todd. Do we have any members who want to comment? Well, first, I want to say that um, I do think it's really important that everybody feel a part. And that's one of the things that I love about the public library is when you go into the library, you uh, can travel the world. You can experience anything without going anywhere. And on, your imagination is your only limitation. And so um, I want to thank you for your your leadership and your information and congratulate you on uh, all your hard work and wish you the best moving thank forward. Thank you. And enjoy your Sacramento Library Pride t-shirts. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Madam sorry, uh, Director Cerna. Thank you. I just wanted to congratulate you on uh, um, not just um, the uh, making the, the best of the obvious intersections between our um, LGBTQ um, uh, community and the mission of the library. But I think uh, we all understand that in recent months, unfortunately, there's been a lot of um, uh, violence and um, reminders, un unfortunately, that um, not everyone in this region um, understands, I think, uh, what pride means in the context of this annual event, um, what it means to um, appreciate people who love one another despite um, their genders. Um, and so I think this uh, is, serves as a, a great acknowledgement that uh, it's not just as individuals that we can celebrate pride, but certainly in our institutions and certainly our local library authority is one of those great institutions. And so again, I just want to acknowledge and thank you and congratulate you for being that component part of that very important reminder. Thank you. I mean, one of the most powerful parts for the day for me was actually seeing SPL parents bring their kids to participate in the parade. 
And uh, seeing that opportunity for them from a workplace is a pretty special thing. So it was a great time. Yeah. Great. Thanks again. Thank you. Seeing no more comments, thank you very much for thank your you. presentation. <laughs> Our next item is item four, executive team report. Thank you, Chair Frost, members of the Library Authority Board. Um, I have my written report and I wanna highlight a couple items. First, um, before is, I wanna thank staff who just gave those two amazing presentations. Um, hearing from me every month, I think, doesn't get quite the, the same passion and excitement as those who are doing the actual projects. And I'm glad we could highlight the folks who are uh, on the ground doing these things and, and accomplishing the great work the library does. Um, Earlier this month, the California Library Association Conference was held here in Sacramento. As the host city, the library participated in a number of ways, and um, among those were doing some uh, local arrangements for our out-of-town colleagues. And uh, part of that was staff uh, being present at a table at the convention center, um, directing uh, other library workers to restaurants, to music venues, to other activities, and um, everyone that attended that conference uh, really enjoyed it and they really participated or uh, enjoyed our participation and the help of the staff in getting them to where they want to go. So hopefully we'll get more California librarians visiting Sacramento on their vacations now that they've had a chance to come see our capital. Um, but even more exciting was the number of staff that participated in a number of programs. I've listed those in uh, the report for you. But our staff took the opportunity to uh, share with our colleagues the great programs we're working on, the great services, the innovations that we've come up with. And I think all the presentations are very well received. Um, we have a great group of staff who are dedicated and intelligent and thoughtful and creative. And I think that comes through in the great things that they're able to share with our colleagues at the library convention this last uh, two weeks ago. Um, and then I just want to highlight, too, that the Fair Oaks Library um, is scheduled to reopen tomorrow. It's been closed for a number of weeks for what we're calling a mini refresh. Um, there have been some new paint, some carpet, some new furniture, and so that's supposed to reopen tomorrow after being closed for a number of weeks. Um, we're really excited to have this opportunity for the community to come back to the library and see the great work that's been done, and hopefully that'll uh, inspire more people to visit the library as we uh, keep our physical plant and facilities uh, clean and inviting. It's really important for us to make sure that our residents feel like they can have a safe place to use the library. Um, and then I do want to highlight that uh, the book first did wrap up. We did our seventh year, and we visited 514 classes in 180 schools, and we passed out 20, over 24,500 books. So that's a lot of books in the hands of, of, of little kids. So hopefully those uh, books will do the trick and encourage a love of reading for our, our, uh, our, young, our young children. And we wanna especially express appreciation to the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library for their major fundraising for this effort and their great volunteer work. They spend hours putting books in bags and visiting classrooms. So this really is a great partnership with the Friends and we're really appreciative of their work. Um, and as Devon mentioned, they did receive the Nonprofit of the Year Award from Senator Ashby, and it was very well-deserving, and we're glad that they will be recognized for their great work. Um, and then finally, if you turn your attention to the statistics page, which numbers are always very exciting for lots of people, but the thing I want to highlight is that uh, year to date over last year, we've increased all our numbers. So we're not still to post or pre-pandemic level of usage, um, but if you look at our year to date over the last four years, um, we are... Uh, over overtaking the last two years significantly. So I think people are coming back to the library. While they may be using us in different ways, they're still finding um, how they want to use the library and taking advantage of that. So I just want to highlight that, um, that we are doing the best we can, and I think that our residents are responding to that. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions any members of the board might have. I do not see anyone in the queue for questions, so thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Coyle. Thank you. Good report. Our next item is item five, information. And we don't have any information. So we'll move to item six, which is 6.1 action summary, uh, contract approval for our library branding. And I am wondering if there are any directors who have questions or items that they want to pull or comment on. Move consent. We have a motion by Supervisor Cerna and a second by uh, Director Laloe. I think there might have been a whisper over there, but I wasn't sure who got there first. So. No, I said it was a whisper, though. <laughs> <laughs> An unusual whisper. <laughs> and I guess we need a re roll call vote, please. Sean Laloe. Uh, Karina. Oh. Devon Graves, oh. De Graves raised his hand in the Zoom program. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Public, uh, I'm over uh, oversight on my part. We have some public comment. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to slow down the the process. I just wanted to follow up on on my report earlier related to item six point two. Um, the friends have an interest in this item because our branding as two separate organizations have been very similar to the benefit of fundraising and volunteering efforts to support the library. So, so given that context, I, as I reviewed the report, um, it wasn't clear if there are, are plans to engage the community with the rebranding process, and then if there were plans to um, include the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library as a part of that kind of uh, focus group process to just make sure that we can best support the library as they go about the rebranding process. Thank you, Devon. And do we have anyone else who would like to make a public comment? Madam Chair? Yes. Just to respond to Devon's um, concern or question or interest, however you want to describe it, is um, my understanding that this uh, contract approval is just that. Um, so the action that this authority is being asked to take today is simply to approve that contract, the details of which will be um, managed accordingly to address some of the um, I think successes and, and ongoing concerns that the friends have. So I just want to put that on the record so it's clear. Thank you, Supervisor Cerna. Um, so we have a motion and a second, and we need a roll call vote. Sean Lalowe. Aye. Karina Talamantes. Katie Valenzuela. Yes. Katie Maple. Aye. Mai Vang. Yes. Phil Cerna. Aye. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Aye. Pat Hume. Mary Jane Lopez Taff. Yes. Rob Brewer. Yes. Kevin Spees. Aye. John Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Yes. Saul Hernandez. Aye. And motion passes with 11 members present. Thank you. Our next item is says action. I'm not sure <laughs> what that means. Uh, we didn't have any action uh, items. Okay. Uh, next item number eight is reports, ideas, or comments from board members. And seeing none, this meeting is adjourned at 3.39 p.m. <laughs>